Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. Our lecture today is titled Chamberlain ECG Rules. Chamberlain ECG Rules is like a continuation to the ECG interpretation lecture in the ECG course. First of all, what's meant by the Chamberlain ECG Rules and where does this name come from? First of all, who is Chamberlain? Professor Douglas Chamberlain is a British cardiologist who founded the first parametric unit and he has put these 10 rules, which are very simple rules, to interpret the ECG whether it is normal or abnormal. So the Chamberlain ECG rules don't diagnose abnormality, no, they just tell you whether the ECG is normal or there is an abnormality that needs to be interpreted by another one. So they are not can, they cannot be used only by cardiologists, but can be used by non-cardiologists and also can be used by paramedics, for example, and can be used by any healthcare workers apart from doctors. So, what are these 10 simple rules for interpreting an ECG as a normal ECG? Rule number one, it looks at the PR interval and it measures it. So, it dictates that PR interval should be from 120 to 200 milliseconds, which is from 3 to 5 small squares. So, rule number 1 checks the PR interval duration. Then we come to rule number 2, which checks a complex duration, and it dictates that complex duration shouldn't exceed 110 milliseconds. This means that it should be less than 3 small squares. Then we come to rule number 3, it looks at lead 1 and lead 2 and it dictates that the QRS complex in lead 1 and lead 2 should be predominantly upright or predominantly positive and some slight disparities may be acceptable in some cases but in most of the cases you will find in normal ECGs that lead 1 and lead 2 should be predominantly positive and I stress on the word dominantly positive because you can find a smallest wave in lead 1 and lead 2 no problem with this, sometimes you may find an initial Q in lead 1 so I'm talking about the predominant pole or predominant voltage of lead 1 and lead 2. Then we come to rule number 4, which apply the same rules that we mentioned in the ECG interpretation regarding the T-wave, as it dictates that the QRS complex and T-wave tend to have the same general direction in the limb leads. If complex is positive, T-wave should be positive, as we see here in the signals which are out, and if the complex is negative, T-wave should be negative like in EVR here. Then we come to rule number 5, and it looks at AVR. And of course, all waves should be negative in EVR because as we know that lead EVR, its positive pole is directed at minus 150 degrees, so it is in the right upper quadrant. And so the electrical activity is directed away from AVR, away from its positive pole. And so this explains that P wave complex and T wave should be negative in AVR. Then we come to rule number six. Rule number six checks something called the R wave progression. It dictates that the R wave in the precord leads or the chest leads must grow from V1 to at least V4, and this is called R wave progression. And to at least V4 means that in V4 we should reach something called the transitional point. The transitional point is the point at which R wave is equal or more than the amplitude of S wave. So the transition zone in normal cases should not be beyond V4. Maybe sometimes earlier than V4, like V3 for example, but should be at V4. This phenomenon is called normal R wave progression. And S wave must grow as well from V1 to at least V3, which is a wave coming after the R wave in the chest leads, but it should disappear in V6. In V6 you can find a small initial Q wave and then a tall R wave. So rule number six, check the R wave progression. We come to rule number 7, and in rule number 7 it checks the ST segment, and it mentions that it should start isoelectric except in V1 and V2, where it may be slightly elevated and this is considered normal, so ST segment should be isoelectric in all ECG leads except V1 or V2 in which it may be elevated. Then we come to rule number 8, and rule number 8 checks the P waves, and it mentions that it should be positive in lead 1, 2 and from V2 to V6 and of course as we mentioned before it would be negative in EVR and this is explained by the axis of atrial depolarization which was mentioned in the previous lecture that the axis of atrial depolarization from the SA node is directed to the left side and downwards and this explains why it is possible lead 1, lead 2 and negative in EVR and of course it would be positive from V2 to V6 in V1 it may be biphasic or it may be negative sometimes. Then we come to rule number 9, and rule number 9 
mention that there should be no Q wave or sometimes only a small Q wave less than 0.04 second which means that less than one small square in duration and lead one two and from V2 to V6 so usually you should find no Q waves but you can find initial Q waves especially in lead V5 V6 1 and AVL sometimes because they are called the lateral ECG leads then finally we come to rule number 10 which means that T wave must be upright and lead 1, 2 and from V2 to V6 and this is something some, some, something considered logical because the lead 1 and lead 2 complex is predominantly positive so lead T wave would be positive in lead 1 and lead 2 and as we mentioned about the general rules of T wave in the lecture of ECG interpretation that it would start to be positive from V2 and continue to be positive till V6 so at the end, we have 10 Chamberlain ECG rules. Uh, as in a summary, rule number one checks the PR interval. Rule number two checks the complex duration. Rule number three checks the complex polarity in lead one, lead two. Rule number four checks that QRS and T waves have the same general direction in limb leads. Rule number five check AVR. Rule number six checks the R wave progression. Rule number seven checks the SC segment. Rule number eight checks the P waves. Rule number nine check presence or absence of small Q waves and rule number 10 check the T wave amplitude or polarity I'm sorry in lead 1 to V2 to V6. Thank you for your listening and I hope you have benefited from this lecture.